Well, here we are again tonight in our Bible study. So glad that you could log on. David Conley here from the Liberty Church of Christ. There are Bible studies going on all over the place throughout Facebook. I've just watched several of them and some great ones going on. But uh, you're here and we're getting to study together. It's been a beautiful day today weather-wise. But we are still battling coronavirus, that invisible enemy. Our governor, Tate Reeves, today issued a, an announcement and he signed a, an executive order, a shelter in place statewide. So that's very serious and it's going to affect a lot of people. It takes place at 5 p.m. on Friday. So everybody, of course, may already be aware of that. What, what they're trying to do with this, while everybody's logging on, we'll, we'll talk about what they're in it and maybe tied to what we're talking about tonight, but what they're trying to do with this um, staying in place, sheltering in place, this, uh, what they call it, social distancing. It, the, from what I understand, the, the, the disease, COVID-19, which is caused by the coronavirus, if it's left unchecked, then the data supports that it will go up, 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 and it'll get worse, it'll get worse, it'll get worse, and and deaths will happen until it peaks out at a, a lot, a lot of cases. And then it'll eventually come down, down, and get better, 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 better. Um, what they're trying to do is instead of it going so high to the millions, uh, they're wanting to flatten that curve. Instead of it being sharp peak up real tall, they're wanting it to be more flat. And the flatter they could get in a flat, flat, would be no coronavirus problem at all. Everything just goes on as usual. But there is a problem, and the quicker they can get that curve flattened, the better off we'll be okay on the other side. But tonight we're going to be talking about another curve in Luke chapter number 15, 11 through 24. So if you haven't got your Bible, go ahead and get your Bibles. We'll look at that and get a piece of paper too, or something to write on. Maybe you write in the Maybe you write in your Bible, then you could write in your margins of your Bible. But the curve we're going to be looking at is a downward curve. We're going to be talking about the prodigal son. Now, the word prodigal is not in this text, not in the Bible here. It's uh, the, the word itself, prodigal, means wasteful. It's used in the text of riotous. And this, this wastefulness is termed prodigal, and that's why we have given it the name of the prodigal or the wasteful son. And, of course, he becomes lost, just like the lost sheep and the lost coin earlier in chapter number 15 of Luke. But you remember the, the story of the prodigal son, how that he, he leaves home and, and he takes a curve downward. And he continues to spiral and spiral and spiral until he reaches the bottom. And then he comes back up and comes back home where he's restored with his uh, father. Well, what we want to do in this class is to show the data, as it were, just like with the coronavirus. They're trying to show the data of how it's going up, 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 and, and how it'll come down, down, down on the other side. And, and with the television, it might be going this way instead of that way. So uh, y'all work with me on that. But with the prodigal son, as it goes down, 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 and up, 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 we would like to flatten the curve on the downside. We don't want anybody to hit bottom. We don't want anybody to even go toward the bottom. We want everybody to stay level in our spiritual lives. But unfortunately, we struggle. So what the idea is, we're collecting the data, as it were, to understand why we go down, down, down. And if we can just flatten that curve and get back up before we hit the pig pen or bottom. So that's going to be the discussion of the letter uh, today, the study today. So have your paper out to write the words because we're going to be studying uh, seven steps down and seven steps back up. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that we gather together in this medium, with this venue, to be able to study your Bible. 
And we pray that as we study from Luke 15, that you will give us the insight that we need and the data that we need to flatten the curve. Don't let us hit the bottom. Don't let us go down. Uh, help us always stay with you level and the relationship that we enjoy with you is so wonderful. We do pray father that you will be with our physical needs right now with the coronavirus and, and people that have suffered from COVID-19 as well as those people that are off work and have been affected physically, even though they haven't been affected with the virus itself, all of the residual effects have just spread out through the country, through the world. We pray that your hand will be upon all of us during this time. But we know you're more interested in our spiritual well-being. So help us to see what we need to see to be able to stay close to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you got your Bibles. Now let's go to Luke chapter number 15, and we're going to begin at verse number 11. Now, the seven steps down from relationship with the Father down to the pig pen, we're going to use seven words. And the, each of those words are going to begin with the letter S. So, so have your piece of paper, your note paper, and the first word, the first step down is self-will. Self-will. Let's look at the verse together. And he said, a certain man had two sons. This is Jesus talking and he's telling a parable. And he's talking about a certain man that has two sons. Now the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth unto me. And he, the father, divided unto them, the two boys, his living. The first step toward the pig pen that the younger boy took was self-will. Give me. What do I want? Not worried about anything but me. So when we get into a position in life with the spiritual life with Jesus and God, and we start thinking, God, we really don't care about what you want. We care about what I want. I want to do my will. We're not being very Christ-like. Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he said, Father, let this cup pass from me, he said, not my will be done, but thy will be done. That shows us that we as Christians ought not to be self-willed. We ought to yield our will to the will of God. But self-will leads to the next step down. And the next step down is selfishness, selfishness. Look at verse number 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. Gathered all together. That's selfish. In the Jewish culture, the father would, of course, give his sons the inheritance. But when the boy said, I want what I want. I'm self-willed. Uh, give me my portion. He was basically telling his father, I wish you were dead and I could get my inheritance now. But by giving him the inheritance, when he gathered all together, that means he sold everything. He liquidated all of his assets. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, the father doesn't have a retirement program. There's no social security program. What they would do is if they turn the flocks, for example, the father owns the flocks to the child, then the child could take the sheep. He would own the sheep and he could cut the wool off of it, but he could take the wool, but the sheep would always be there for the father's benefit so that the father could get out of the sheep some wool and so forth until he dies. If you sell the sheep, or if you kill the sheep, then you've just taken away your father's retirement program. He was basically selfish when he liquidated the assets. Self-will leads to selfishness, meaning I only care about myself and I don't care about anyone else. 
don't even care about my dad. So we can see how these steps lead to one another. When I want what I want, then I can go to a selfishness where I don't care what anybody else has either. But then there's the third step down and it's separation. Separation. Look at the remainder part of that verse, the next part of verse number 13 and took his journey into a far country. The boy left daddy, left home. That's what selfishness will get you. When you don't care about anybody else and you only want your will to be done, then you will separate yourself from family, friends, church family. Separation can lead to a lot of problems. We're experiencing some separation because of this coronavirus challenge that's going on. We, we can't meet, we can't assemble. I was talking to somebody just the other day and she said, oh, how I miss it. I miss it so much. She said, I didn't really understand how much I would miss it. I, I, I actually took it for granted that we got together. Well, it just goes to show you that God knows best anyway. So this separation will come when we become selfish. And when we separate from each other and we separate from God, then we can have all sorts of problems because it leads to the next step down. And the next step down is sensuality. Sensuality. Look at the remainder part of verse 13. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. He let his self will lead to selfishness where he didn't care about anybody else, caused him to separate from his family. And then he was wide open to just do what he, if it felt good, do it. Just do what makes me feel good. That's what happens in our sensuality. We fight a battle every day with our flesh. And the further away we get from one another to encourage one another, the more likely we will satisfy the desires of self in our sensuality. And that's exactly what this boy done in that next step down. And he wasted it. There's that word prodigal. He certainly was a prodigal son. But then the next step down is spiritual destitution, spiritual destitution. Look at verse 14. And when he had spent all, there's the destitution part. There arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. He had spent it all. Folks, when we leave one another, when we separate from God, then we will eventually, as we spend everything on our sensualness, sensuality, we will spend it all. And that's where he was. And we can reach that spiritual destitution. We're destitute. We don't have a spiritual rock. We don't have a spiritual something to hold on to. People out there today are, are maybe feeling spiritual destitution. Maybe it's because they've been living sensually for so long with self-will and selfishness. And then all of a sudden, bad things start happening. Oh my, what am I supposed to do now? They're destitute. They've spent all. But then it leads to the next step down, the sixth step. And it's self-abasement. Self-abasement. And look at verse number 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. Abasement means humility. It's humiliating. When you're in a situation that is so abase, just abase, it's not very low, you're, you're, it's humiliating. Well, that's where this Jew found himself, because to a Jew, swine, Pigs are unclean animals. And he found himself in the humiliating state of having to feed pigs. Folks, that could be a 
drug addict, poor drug addict that's found himself in a humiliating state where he wound up in jail. It could be a wealthy man who's found himself in a humiliating state where he had an affair with and committed adultery with his secretary or someone like that. Uh, you just get into a humiliating state when you start fulfilling your sensual desires and you reach spiritual destitution, spend it all. And then you hit bottom. Step number seven, starvation, spiritual starvation. Look at verse number 16. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave to him. He would fain. He, he had decided to. This is the point that he got, that he was so hungry that he would eat the slop. He would eat the pig food. That's how humiliating we can go. That's how bottom we can go. We can be spiritually starving, and there was no help. And there was no hope. We don't want to get to that bottom state. If we're finding that we're on our way down, even from self-will to selfishness, we feel like we're getting down to sensuality. Let's flatten that curve. You know, let's let's get on back up before we get that far down. But let's say that somebody out there is that far down. How do you get back up? The good news is we can go back up. The next seven steps is back out of the pig pen. And we're going to use R words to get, we used S words to get you down. Now we're going to use R words to get us up. And the first R word is realization. Realization. We've got to realize that we're in a mess. We're on the bottom. Look at verse number 17. And when he came to himself, realization. He said, how many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. He came to himself. He realized that he was in a mess. That was the first good thought he probably had since he left home. When we reach bottom, the way to get up is to take that first step and is to realize that you're on the bottom. Alcoholics Anonymous and programs like that, that's the first thing they tell you. You've got to admit it. You've got to admit that I'm in a mess. That's step number one. Uh, my name is David Conley and I'm an alcoholic is what you would say if you were in that mess. And until you're willing to get to that point, there's no way up because each step leads to the next step. Let's look at the next step when you realize that you're in a mess. Resolution. Resolution. I am resolved. I'm going to make a plan. Let's look at the next verse, verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Finally, the boy is taking his step up. He realized that he was in a mess and he made a resolution. He made a decision to get up and go somewhere to get this thing better. He got a plan, but just having a plan is not enough. You can realize you're in a mess and you can make a plan to get out of that mess, but you got to take the next step. And the next step is repentance. Repentance. You got to be sorry for what you've done. Let's look at the next verse, number 19. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. You've got to realize that I have been in a mess and I need a plan to get home. And I am so sorry that I have left father and made it to this pig pen. We've got to get there. And we're not going to get repentance until we get realization. And we're not going to get repentance until we have a resolution to make things better. But we're not going to get back home to God until we take the next step up. And that is return. We got to take action. Up to this point, these first three steps, the realization, the resolution and the repentance, 
all happened in his mind. It all happened in his spirit. Now we got to do something. Got to take some action. And this action is to actually return. Look at the next verse, verse number 20. And he arose. There you go. He took some action. He came to his father. There it is. He returned. We've got to return. So many people are just repenting and saying how sorry they are. But true repentance is not just being sorry. It's turning and taking action to do better. And that's exactly what this young man did. He returned. He took action. And this action then led him to the next step up out of the pig pen. And that is reconciliation. Reconciliation. To be reconciled. To be reconciled means to come back together with God. Look at verse number 20. Finish that verse out. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. There's that reconciliation. Father said, I want you home. I've been waiting. And, and he ran to him for a Jewish old man. A father to run is not very uh, the right socially acceptable. But Jesus didn't care when he's explaining about how God responds to us when we come back home, when we return. He wants to be reconciled. He runs to be reconciled. He fell on his neck. He kissed him. Verse 21 says, the son said unto him, father, I have sinned. Say so he's fulfilling his plan to go and tell his father that he has sinned against heaven and in thy sight and in no more worthy to be called thy son. I don't, I don't feel worthy. So he's repenting. He's repenting to his father. But then the father takes him up to that next step. And step number six is reclothing, reclothing. To reclothe this Jewish boy is to reinstate him as a son. Look at verse number 22. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand. And that ring it's a family ring. It's an insignia ring. It's a ring that says, you're my son. You're not a servant. You're not a slave boy. You're my son. You always have been my son, but you were lost. You were lost. You were dead to me. You had no inheritance with me, but now I'm giving this ring. You're my son again and shoes on his feet. That restitution. It's what God has always wanted those people that have hit the pig pen to always have. And then finally, number seven, when you get back up to where God wants you to be in grace with him is rejoicing. That's the final seven step. It's the most natural step after you've gone through all these steps to come out of the pig pen. It's rejoicing. Look at verse number 23 and bring hither the fatted calf, kill it. Let us eat and be merry. There's your rejoicing. Now, why are we going to be happy? Verse number 24. For this, my son. Now, he's always been his son. Once you're a son of God, you're always a son of God. But you can be a lost son. You can be a dead son. You can be a a son that has no inheritance with the father. Once, once you are in God's child, you are his child. But you could be lost. And, and we don't want to be lost. That's why we want to flatten that curve. We don't want to hit that pig pen. The good news is that this son who was lost, that's what he said. But this, my son, was dead. He was dead. Dead to the father. But... He's alive again. He was lost. That's what the Bible says. Somebody says, well, once you're saved, you're always saved. You can never really be lost. Well, that's not what this Jesus is teaching here. He says that boy was lost. He's my boy, but he's lost. Here's the good news. He is found again. And they begin to rejoice. You see, when a son is lost in the pig pen, he will be lost and he will remain lost until he takes those steps 
to get back to where the father can be reconciled and be happy. Now, we don't even want to get down there, do we? We want to flatten that curve. We don't even want to start with self-will. We want to stay with God. And I hope this lesson has been encouraging to, to teach us the data, as it were. What causes the lostness and what causes the reconciliation? Be that with us on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We'll do this again, Facebook Live, and keep that habit. You know, it's a good habit that you've got by joining with us here at 7 o'clock. You've been coming to Wednesday night Bible class for a long time. Why don't you continue that and come to Sunday morning worship? Don't break the habit. Just write it on your calendar and, and be there at 10 o'clock, Lord willing, on Sunday morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you once again for giving us your Holy Bible, that we can delve deeply into the words of it and learn principles that will help us be better. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good night.